This segment is on capillary pressures and capillary exchange. There are three important processes that move material across typical capillary walls. These three processes are diffusion, filtration, and reabsorption. Diffusion is the movement of ions or molecules from an area where their concentration is higher to an area where their concentration is lower. The difference between the high and low concentrations represents a concentration gradient. Diffusion occurs most rapidly when the concentration gradient is large. It also occurs most rapidly when the ions or molecules are small or when the distance for them to travel is short. Different substances diffuse across capillary walls by different routes. Water, ions, and small molecules such as glucose and amino acids can usually enter or leave the bloodstream by diffusing between the endothelial cells of the capillaries or they can diffuse through the pores of the fenestrated capillaries. Ions such as potassium, sodium, calcium, and chloride diffuse across the endothelial cells through channels in the plasma membranes. Large water-soluble compounds are unable to enter or leave the bloodstream except at fenestrated capillaries. Fenestrated capillaries are at the hypothalamus, the kidneys, other endocrine organs, and the intestinal tract and are the only place for these large water-soluble compounds to enter or leave the bloodstream. Lipids, like fatty acids and steroids, as well as lipid-soluble materials such as oxygen and carbon dioxide, cross the capillary walls by diffusing through the endothelial plasma membranes. Plasma proteins are normally unable to cross the endothelial lining anywhere, except in places like the liver, where there are sinusoids. Solutes can be pushed out into the interstitial fluid between the cells of the capillary wall in a process called filtration. Filtration is the removal of solutes from a solution as the solution flows across a porous membrane. The driving force for filtration is hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure is caused by the blood flow as the blood pressure pushes the blood up against the walls of the capillary. Water and small solutes are forced against the capillary walls and pushed out of the capillaries into the interstitial fluid, leaving larger solutes and suspended proteins in the bloodstream. The solute molecules that leave the bloodstream are small enough to pass between adjacent endothelial cells of the capillaries or between the pores in the fenestrated capillaries. Filtration takes place at the arterial end of the capillary where the pressure is greater than at the venous end of the capillary. Reabsorption is another process that moves materials across the capillary walls. Reabsorption occurs as a result of osmosis. Osmosis is the diffusion of water across a selectively permeable membrane where water moves from high water concentration to low water concentration, or water moves from low solute concentration to high solute concentration. In other words, water diffuses towards the solution containing the higher solute concentration. There is a higher solute concentration inside the capillaries due to the plasma proteins that are more abundant in the blood than they are in the interstitial fluid. The osmotic pressure of a solution is an indication of the force of osmotic water movement. The higher the solute concentration of a solution, the greater is the solution's osmotic pressure. Therefore, the more suspended proteins there are in the plasma that can't cross the blood vessel walls, the greater is the plasma's osmotic pressure. In other words, the plasma proteins act as solutes that will pull water from the interstitial fluids into the blood vessels. The osmotic pressure caused from the plasma proteins is often called blood colloid osmotic pressure or BCOP. Clinically another term used for this is oncotic pressure. The movement of the water due to the osmotic pressure will continue until the solute concentrations are equalized between the inside and the outside of the blood vessels. As an overview, Water moves continuously out of the capillaries and into the tissues. From the tissues it will move into the lymphatic vessels and back to the heart where it will be deposited back into the blood. This movement of water helps to ensure that the plasma and the interstitial fluid are in constant communication and mutual exchange. And it accelerates the distribution of nutrients, hormones, and dissolved gases throughout the tissues. As the blood flows from the arterial end of the capillary to the venous end, the blood pressure drops and so less filtration and reabsorption will occur at the venous end of the capillary. It's important to understand how the net filtration and the net reabsorption are calculated. The net hydrostatic pressure is the difference between the hydrostatic pressure inside the capillary wall and the hydrostatic pressure outside the capillary. The blood pressure pushes the blood against the walls of the capillaries, but this is somewhat opposed by the pressure of the interstitial fluid against the wall of the capillaries. There's more of a push 
to get water out of the capillary than there is a push to get fluid into the capillary. The net hydrostatic pressure is the difference between those two forces. The plasma proteins in the capillaries create the colloid osmotic pressure that pulls water into the blood vessel, but there is also interstitial fluid colloid pressure from a small amount of plasma proteins in the interstitial fluid. More of a pull comes from the plasma proteins inside the capillaries than from the proteins in the interstitial fluid. The net colloid pressure is the difference between the pull from the interstitial proteins and the pull from the blood plasma proteins. There is more of a net push to move fluid out of the capillary than there is a net pull to move fluid into the capillary. The difference between the net push and the net pull is called the net filtration pressure. The net filtration pressure, then, is the difference between the net hydrostatic pressure and the net osmotic pressure. At the arterial end, the net filtration pressure will be much higher than at the venous end.